What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing a brand new analysis on a new Super Power 3 trailer that just came out today. This is going to be about demography. So before we get started here, guys, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I know I've been getting a lot more attention because of Super Power 3, and I am definitely going to be a Super Power 3 related channel, and we are going to be playing superpower as soon as it comes out it's going to be a big day for all of us it's going to be a big day for this channel it's going to big it be a big day for everyone else guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel and i'm also in talks with golem labs to try and do a giveaway of superpower 3 once it comes out so go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that but otherwise uh, we are going to an analyze this trailer we're going to do exactly what we did in the last one in which we uh, play the trailer first and then we uh, analyze it after i'll go ahead and put the timestamps down in the description so uh if you guys don't care about watching the trailer and just want analysis um you guys will be able to uh skip around so um let's go ahead and watch this trailer and i'll see you guys on the other side In Superpower 3, the demographic sphere is both the easiest to understand and the hardest to master. It's a singular addition to the series that probably has the largest underlying impact on whether you can be a successful leader of your country or if you will lose it in shame. One of the most interesting elements we have added to the game is the concept of cultures. Basically, a culture is a set of values that determine the general predisposition of a group of people to like or dislike the values that another group has. It's not a matter of simply comparing ethnicity, language, or religion, even if these variables are an important factor. In cultures, we also include six social traits. These elements mean that all population groups will be more comfortable in certain settings. Not everyone is a conservative, and not everyone is a liberal, but some are. Not everyone respects their leader in the same way, or accept hardships for the common good. These factors become important in the game, because it means that based on cultures, not all countries will be comfortable with leaders that perform differently than what is expected of them. A more conservative society might not be willing to accept laws to allow abortions or to protect the rights of minorities. Also, conservative societies might not look favorably on their leader if he or she starts doing trade or treaties with very liberal countries. This gives much more nuances to the player and adds difficulty levels. In Superpower 3, you'll need to play differently, not only based on your resources, but also based on how your population expects you to lead your nation. Of course, populations vary in time, they can be influenced by the media or by news gathered on the internet. You, as a leader, must then decide how best to use these elements of subversion or control, depending on how your reign is going. Media can be friend or foe, and media have cultures as well, based on where the market of the country is. And you, as a political entity, will have a culture as well. That culture will be based on your actions. These will either be aligned with the aspirations of your population or not, influencing your approval ratings. It will lastly affect your standing in the world, since other countries will also try to align their trades and treaties with countries of similar cultures. The last important point to consider concerning your demography. In Superpower 3, regions can sometimes change ownership through trade or most of the time warfare. If that happens, you won't only inherit a region with production and geography. That region will be inhabited by citizens that will probably be different than the ones you started out with, who may have different cultures and ideas about what they would like for their new country. As these games evolve, the challenges multiply. All right, and that was uh, the... A uh, new trailer for Superpower 3. Let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. So if we start Edition. off right here. So it's actually very interesting about what he's been saying. So essentially we can play it and then he says. In Superpower 3, the demographic sphere is both the easiest to understand and the hardest to master. 
It's a singular addition to the series that probably has the largest underlying impact on whether you can be a successful leader of your country or if you will lose it in shame. One of the so essentially, and he actually comes over to the character tab right here. So essentially the, um, I know a lot of you guys are worried about this game um, and how it's going to perform and how it's going to be. And I guess that's why they're trying to uh, make these trailers is to try and say, okay, well, um, here's a lot more information about the game and are finally releasing all of this information after so long. Um, and it, it just it kind of scared a lot of us whenever they came out and said, OK, uh, October 7th is coming out. And we we're like, uh, what? We literally have zero information. I've seen a lot of other worried YouTube channels, um, a part of it. I can't remember the guy's name, but he made a video. He said, I'm worried about Super Power 3. Um, but uh, essentially, so the biggest thing about Super Power 3 is that demography exists. So in a previous video, I actually was talking about uh, this one. So I think I said that it was like a, it was a part of the politics tab or something like that. But then later on, I figured out that it was the demography tab. So essentially, demography is um, it's 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 the how your country is made up. So it's how um, it's by ethnicities, it's by cultures, it's by media groups, it's by uh, conservative and liberal. It's by all of these different types of uh, groups that are inside of your country. That is demography. And it's how they support you. It's how they look at you. And that's all that matters. So it's apparently in Superpower 3, demography is going to be something, you know, back in Superpower 2, you just tried to make your pop population happy and made sure you didn't get thrown out of office. So in this one, you can actually, you actually have to pay attention to a lot more groups. You have to pay attention to the American press on the bottom right. You can actually privatize, close them, or nationalize the media groups in your country. You have Hispanics, you have Blacks in your country that you can actually kind of mess with those uh, demographic groups. Series ...that probably has the largest underlying impact on whether you can be a successful leader of your country or if you will lose it in shame. So essentially he's saying that it has the largest impact of how you lead your country. So it's no longer that you're doing it by policy or even in Power and Revolution where you just do it and you have to deal with a lot of the protests or even being thrown out of office. Um which Power and Revolution is probably the only other game that actually considers other ideologies and other factors that impact population. So that's one of the reasons why the character creation tool is so important now. If you're making a Muslim or a Kazakhstani guy that's running for president or being president in the United States, you're not going to have a really fun time trying to get your popularity up because not a lot of people like you based on what you look like. It's going to be very important every time you make a new character. And if you don't really care, care about making the character, just you don't want to pay attention to that, but you want to make it random for how uh, what other country you're playing as, you can make it random for Kazakhstan, for example, in which now you are an Albanian a language. So it's language and religion that uh, makes up the demographic groups that you're going to be a part of. So in language, you could put English and then uh, like uh, over here where you see all these countries right here, it'll show you a bunch of these countries that'll light up and say, this is what these this is what country is uh, is recommended for this character. A um, little bit of weird map right here. You can actually see that the Baltic Sea is just gone. It's just not even there. Um, even the Red Sea is uh, completely gone. A lot of a uh, lot of a uh, weird map changes right here. Um, hopefully that's not in the final game. But uh, moving on, we can actually come over here and uh, we're gonna listen to what the guy says real quick. Is that determine the general predisposition of a group of people to like or dislike the values that another group has. It's not a matter of simply comparing ethnicity, language, or religion, even if these variables are an important factor. In cultures, we also include six social traits. These elements mean that all population groups will be more comfortable in certain settings. So essentially, that's what these culture uh, ideas are right here. So there's six of, six of them. PDI, so PDI is the Power Displacement Index, I believe. Um, it's like the it's the power index um, is what it's called. We have PDI, we have IDV, we have MAS, we have UA, UAI, we have LTO, and we have IVR. 
So essentially, this is where maybe the world is or where your population is. And then this is where you are right now. So I guess if these if these uh, groups, if you can click like the the religion groups right here, I believe. Um, so you have 85 85 percent uh, English, 42 percent Protestant. 60% uh, European complex ethnicity. So essentially you can click on one of these and it shows you what that culture is looking at, uh, is looking like in these uh, indexes right here. So I guess if the if these uh, two icons get further and further apart, then essentially you can run the risk of getting thrown out of power or maybe even a, a, a region of your of your country seceding and then maybe even starting some sort of civil war in your country because I've actually I actually remember uh, back whenever this game was announced it even said that like taking over the world isn't going to be as easy because it you're running the risk of uh, combining all of these different cultures under your own primary culture and then you're not going to be able to do it because everyone's going to be seceding from you and it's just going to be extremely hard for you to take over the world so there was actually one guy um i can't remember the guy's name right now but uh, i actually invited him to a superpower 3 meetup um essentially what we are doing what what he what he did it was the rise of Djibouti series so if you guys uh were Back, if you guys discovered Super Power Three like ten years ago, you'll remember the Rise of Djibouti series. But essentially, he was taking over the world as Djibouti, and um, so he actually said that uh, that uh, this uh, game is going to be the last hurrah for his channel. Um, and I'm I'm pretty excited to see what he can do with that. I want to see another uh, Rise of Djibouti series. Um, but, but yeah, like, so if you can remember that it was pretty easy for him to do it because all you have to do is go in annex and do it again and rinse and repeat throughout the entire world and then get nuked by the nuclear powers. What we're seeing now is that it's going to be a lot harder for you to do that because again, um, you're not going to be able to keep all these people happy if you're just focusing on taking over other countries and, and, uh, just annexing and trying to go over all over the world. Um, it's going to be a lot harder for you to do that because, again, you're running the risk of going into a civil war. Not everyone is a conservative and not everyone is a liberal, but some are. Not everyone respects their leader. In so we actually see right here, this is exactly what the demographic tab looks like. So we're looking at it right here. So we have uh, selected country France. So we can actually see our population tab and culture tab. And then we have a selected country's uh, population culture tab, and we can actually compare and contrast um, all of our uh, uh, icons. So we have birth rate that we can look at, we have total population, we have population growth rates, um, and then we have our death rates. And then we have our immigration options. So immigration is uh, allowed. Um, and then social groups, we have uh, Hispanics, and I'm gonna assume this is white, black, Hispanic, um, and then we only have three of them in the United States, assuming this is the United States. You can actually see down here, this is a this is what the uh, the bottom uh, sectors actually look like. You know, so they actually changed it from the initial build that we were looking at about a year ago. So that's actually really cool that they actually changed that. I, I think it looks a lot better. The other one actually, it, it looked pretty weird, honestly, not gonna lie. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming it's a little, yeah, it's a little the same wind way. or something like right here because um, there was actually all these tabs that you can actually see right, right over here. You can see um, like the growth rate or the nuclear powers or something like that, I think. Um, and then so down here you have your uh, population demographic tab, you have your politics tab, you have your economic tab, and then you have your military tab right here. Uh, and then you have your culture indexes, you have your majority of everything, and then you have your immigration tab, whether it's opened or closed. And then you actually have right here, so you have 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then you have these, uh, so it's by year where it shows you where your growth is going and if it's like going up or down or anything like that. Way, or accept hardships for the common good. These factors become important in the game because it means that based on cultures, not all countries will be comfortable with leaders that perform differently than what is expected of them. A more conservative society might not be- So you actually see right here, this is what it looks like um, over the course of several years. So we are in the year, looks like 2023. And our approval rating has consistently been around 80, 90 percent. 
Um, which is actually what I've always liked about Superpower 2 is that like you can't really always be at 100%. That's one thing about Power and Revolution um, is kind of bro- broken is that your approval rating is always at 100% whenever you're having a good time in the game. Um, but then we have elections are disabled. Uh, Montevideo is the capital, so we're probably not playing as the United States right here. Oh, uh, yeah, we're actually not uh, selected country Brazil. No, we are playing. I can't actually tell what we're playing. Playing, well, not, we're not playing the United States. Um, then we have our indexes right here. We don't see those little icons. Uh, okay, so here it is right here. So we have government, and then we have our population. So right here is our population uh, affinity, and then this is our government affinity. So if these are extremely spread apart, that's when you can actually see those like uh, maybe civil war scenarios where people are actually seceding from your country because they are so upset at the government over uh, their uh, just perceived ignorance toward that population group. Be willing to accept laws to allow abortions or to protect the rights of minorities. This is the this is the other thing that uh, I'm I'm hoping in the future they at least add some more laws. So we kind of have a lot of laws that are similar to what we had in Superpower Two. So we have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, homosexuality, abortion, gay marriage, and reproductive freedom. So essentially, what we are doing. Um, it, these are the things, you know, it can make it a conservative society, society or a liberal society. So all of these being legal is definitely a uh, liberal society in which it's going to make your conservative population upset. Um, so essentially what we are thinking is that it's, it's a little bit simple, but again, I hope they add more laws in the future. Um, that way we have a lot more uh, freedom and a lot more just uh, diversity whenever it comes to these laws. Also, conservative societies might not look favorably on their leader if he or she starts doing trade or treaties with very liberal countries. So that's the other thing is that apparently that uh, your population knows who you're enacting trade with and knows who you're kind of like going further with in terms of diplomatic relations. So you can't just sit there and start signing cultural exchanges in your country with a country that doesn't share your values. So you can, so as the United States, you can be sharing your values with German countries, uh, uh, Polish countries, Baltic countries, etc., because they do somewhat share your values. Um, if they're, maybe if they're, uh, they're, political uh, alignment is along your side but also demographically along your side but then if you're doing it if, the, if it's the united states and maybe saudi arabia iran china uh, maybe even russia at some point um, it is going to upset your population in which they're not going to want to exchange those values with that other country or even receive the exchange with those values. And it's actually maybe going to make your popula popularity uh, drop. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether that does actually play out in game. This gives much more nuances to the player and adds difficulty levels. In Superpower 3, you'll need to play differently. And another thing that's, uh, that I can actually see right here, we have the land. Um, I want to see what you can actually do to uh, increase these numbers right here. So if we can increase our forest area, or urban area, or other area, or arable lands. Um, possibly, pretty sure the arable lands will be through this environment funding tab right here. Um, so we can see that $5 billion is being given to environment. And then instead of going over to the budget tab or the economy tab, then we can just come over here and then just increase the environment funding tab through the demography tab. Based on your resources, but also based on how your population expects you to lead your nation. Of course, Population. So just like he said, is that it's not only about how you are leading it, it's how your population expects you to lead it. So if you have an extremely conservative uh, population, then you're going to be able to lead. A, if you lead it conservatively, then, you know, you're not going to have that many issues. But if you're trying to lead it liberally, you're going to have a lot more issues. Another thing right here, we can actually see what the map looks like whenever you're really, really zoomed in. So we can actually see, um, we can maybe see Brighton right here. We can definitely see London. This is the United Kingdom. We see uh, Dublin over here. We see Northern Ireland, Belfast. 
Uh, and then we see a lot of uh, Wales and Scotland up here. We see Edinburgh over there. A lot of the central UK cities uh, over in the central part of England. It's very in time. They can be influenced by the media or by news gathered on the internet. We can actually see that uh, that the uh, the sunset and the sunrise and sunset, it actually follows where the buildings are. So the buildings are actually actually there. And then you can see, you know, what time it is, I guess, in uh, in Superpower 3. So that's actually very interesting to see that play out in time lapse. You, as a leader, must then decide how best to use these elements of subversion or control. So right around here, you can actually see what Madagascar looks like as you zoom in. So it's very interesting to see um, what it looks like whenever you are zooming in. Um, I, I wonder if you can actually kind of pan it back as far back as they are right here. Um, I hope they do. Maybe there's some sort of camera control where you can actually watch battles in like some sort of epic view or something like that. I want to be able to see like how the battles are playing out, maybe what other strategies you can employ while you're battling other countries. Depending on how your reign is going, media can be friend or foe, and media have cultures as well, based on where the market of the country is, and you as a pol So apparently these uh, media groups have cultures of their own, just as I said before, in which that these uh, media groups will have their own ideologies. So we see that they are different colors. Maybe that means what kind of a uh, ideologies they are. Maybe this means uh, liberal. This means maybe communist. These are centrist. And then we have like a conservative one right here. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how how well the media plays into superpower three country is, and you as a political entity will have a culture as well. That culture will be based on your actions. These will either be aligned with the aspirations of your population or not, influencing your approval ratings. It will lastly affect your standing in the world, since other countries will also... Tr so apparently, just like he said before, it's going to affect your standing in the world, how your political ideology as you're enacting policies and trade policies, it's going to have an effect on how other countries see you in the world. So as we go on right here, we can actually see what the trade tab looks like. We actually have our own trade tab right here. So it looks like that we can actually, looks like trades, we have this plus button right here. We can come over to this plus button and we can actually uh, enact trade with other countries. So we can actually see right here, exports 5.55%. We are trading a volume of $571 million with the Netherlands, with $439 million with Sierra Leone, $300 million with Nigeria, $280 1 million Mozambique um, and etc etc Thailand and Paraguay so we can go over to this plus button I would assume and then we can pick like China or Russia or um, the United States or Australia and we can kind of say okay we're going to kind of have this weird trade policy maybe we can like form the Anglosphere where or the the American uh, trade pact with the UK and like just like the ang Anglosphere kind of thing. So just like it said, the cultures are pretty important. Maybe forming Kanzuk or the Kanzukas um, would be a very good idea because it would please your population and it would also uh, increase your relations with those countries. So you can actually come over here and then again, enact some sort of trade policy with Europe or with Africa or with Asia. And so that's going to be very interesting to see what other people's trade tabs will look like um, depending on where they are in the world. So like if an American is doing it, see how theirs looks. And then if maybe like a Turkish player is doing it, see what theirs looks like. And then a European player, Asian player, etc. Um, so that's actually going to be really fun to see what kind of diversity we see in, in terms of these trade policies that other players are enacting. We'll align their trades and treaties with countries of similar cultures. So just like I said, with Kanzuk, it would be a, an, an, a, an extremely good idea now that we know this, that uh, Kanzuk would be probably be one of the first things that players form uh, as the United States or with the United Kingdom or something like that. The last important point to consider concerning your demography 
in super so right here we can actually see what the economy tab looks like so we have cereals we have the legality status of cereals we have unemployment in this sector and then we have productivity is three thousand seven hundred ninety dollars per hour and then uh land um I, is at sixteen hundred and two percent of land or something uh, we see the country's consumption of this product. We are producing $32 billion and trading off $6, $6 billion. And then we have a uh, trade surplus of $16 billion in that sector. It is accounting for 0.78% of our GDP. And we can actually modify an investment into the sector. So instead of, you know, just like we, what we were doing in uh, Superpower 2, where the more that you would increase production to the sector, the more it would cost over time. So you end up spending like $7 trillion on, on uh, trying to get it to 100% or something like that. You can actually come over here and then you can do a modified investment, I guess, if... Uh, maybe you uh, can give them a hundred dollars or something like that and then you can up it from a hundred dollars to a million dollars and then a million dollars down to like five hundred thousand dollars and then five hundred thousand to like forty million dollars and then kind of go through that i don't know if it's consistent investment or just a one-time investment so we will actually see whenever the game drops or we get more information off of the economy maybe in a future trailer so we actually also see right here, we can see a selected country's budget. So we're for Germany, we are playing Germany right now. We are looking at Austria's information right here. They have a GDP of 959 million billion dollars, 2.7% of the world GDP possibly. Uh, they have an income of 145 uh, billion dollars with fixed expenses at 27.7 billion dollars and their expenses are 18.3 billion dollars and we don't see any balances right here we do see their economic sectors of uh, how much maybe they're exporting and how much they're importing is the blue and the green um, and then we see the most that they are trading with with other countries and then maybe we can go through and see the list of other european countries and what their economies look like in superpower three regions can sometimes change ownership through trade or most of the time warfare if that happens you won't only inherit a region with production and geography that region will be inhabited by citizens that will probably be different than the ones you started out with who may have different cultures and ideas about what they would like for their new country. As so essentially what he's saying right there is that if you go through and uh, trade, so what, what I'm, what I'm interested in is he said that you can trade with the, with the region, um, maybe a specific region and then try to kind of like under some sort of discontent in that region with trade. But what he also said is that whenever you take over a region, just, just like I said before, when you take over a region, so if I am playing Saudi Arabia and I go over to Australia and take over the Western Australia region of Australia, they're obviously not going to be that aligned with my country. So if I'm going to go on a world domination spree, it's going to be a lot harder to, you know, invading it might be easy, but it's going to be a lot harder for me to go through and try to take over the world because a lot of regions are not going to be sharing my ideologies, are not going to be sharing my religion, not going to be sharing my ethnicity or language. So if we're trying to go over for, uh, to Texas as Saudi Arabia and take over Texas as Saudi Arabia, again, it's going to be a lot harder for me to do that because Texas obviously does not share the same language, religion, or ethnicity as Saudi Arabia. So it's going to be very interesting to see how anyone take over the world in Superpower 3, whether it's easy or whether it's difficult. ...and ideas about what they would like for their new country. As these games evolve, the challenges multiply. So very interesting trailer for Super Power 3. We have uh, the demography tab has now been explained to us. Um, but yeah, guys, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys like this video, go ahead and uh, tell me what you guys' thoughts are down below. Do you guys Are you guys excited for Super Power 3? Are you guys uh, worried about Super Power 3? I know there's a lot of worry out there for Super Power 3. I am worried just as well as you are. So um, we've been waiting a very long time for this game, and I know they know that we have been waiting a very long time for this game. Hopefully an October 7th release date is not something that uh, screws all of this up, all of this hype, all of this everything. And I really hope that all of you guys are going to enjoy this game. I know 
Um, I'm possibly going to enjoy it. Hopefully, I, I'm just not you know, disappointed by it, but uh, we will find out on October 7th. Guys, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's get up to 10,000 subscribers. I am doing several giveaways. Um, I am actually about to do a giveaway at 6,500 subscribers uh, for Power and Revolution Geopolitical Simulator 4, if you guys are interested. So get us up to 6,500, and I will be doing that giveaway very soon. And as well, the next goal is 10,000 subscribers. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit uh, 10,000. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.